elderly woman adopts neglected child. The way the child repaid her later is heartwarming. It was a bitterly cold evening in late December, the kind of night that cracked into your bones and made you long for the warmth of a fire. The small town of Cedarville was already blanketed in a thick layer of snow, and the streets were nearly deserted as the last of the holiday shoppers hurried home. Alexander Thompson, a widow in her late 70s, was among them, clutching a bag of groceries in one hand and her cane in the other. She moved slowly, carefully, mindful of the icy sidewalks. Alexander had lived in Cedarville for nearly 50 years, most of them spent with her beloved husband Robert. But Robert had passed on several years ago, leaving Alexander to navigate the quiet of their home alone. Her days were filled with routine cooking, reading, tending to her small garden in the warmer months. But nights like these, when the world outside felt so vast and empty, often left her feeling more alone than ever. As she turned the corner onto her street, something unusual caught her eye. There, huddled against the wall of an abandoned building, was a small figure, a child, she realized with a start. The girl couldn't have been more than seven or eight years old, her thin frame barely covered by a worn-out coat, her arms wrapped tightly around herself in a vain attempt to keep warm. Alexander's heart hounded in her chest as she approached the child, her protective instincts kicking in. Sweetheart, she called softly, not wanting to startle her. What are you doing out here in the cold? The girl looked up, her wide eyes filled with fear and exhaustion. She didn't say anything, but her expression spoke volumes. She was lost alone and terrified. Alexander knelt down beside her, ignoring the protest from her aging knees. Come with me, dear, she said gently, reaching out a hand. Let's get you somewhere warm. The child hesitated, glancing around as if expecting someone to appear and stop her. But when no one did, she finally took Alexander's hand, her small fingers icy to the touch. Do you have a name? Alexander asked as they walked slowly back to the house. Gemma, the girl whispered, her voice barely audible. Gemma, Alexander repeated, smiling down at her. That's a beautiful name. I'm Alexander. Gemma didn't respond, but she squeezed Alexander's hand a little tighter, and that was enough. Alexander knew in that moment that this child had come into her life for a reason. Alexander's home was a modest two-bedroom cottage at the edge of town. It was cozy and inviting, filled with the warmth of years gone by. The walls were lined with photographs, pictures of Alexander and Robert in their younger days, of family gatherings, and of the many milestones they had shared together. As they entered the house, the warmth of the fireplace greeted them, and Alexander hurried to help Gemma out of her wet coat. You must be freezing, she murmured, leading the girl to the living room. Sit by the fire, dear. I'll make us some hot chocolate. Gemma sat down hesitantly, her eyes darting around the room as if she couldn't believe she was safe. Alexander busied herself in the kitchen, heating milk and stirring in cocoa, all the while thinking about the girl. Who was she? Where had she come from? And why was she out there alone on such a cold night? When Alexander returned with two steaming mugs, she found Gemma curled up in an armchair, her small frame looking even smaller against the oversized cushions. Here you go, Alexander said, handing her the mug. Drink up. It'll warm you right to your toes. Gemma took the mug with both hands, the warmth seeping into her fingers. She sipped cautiously, the sweet taste of chocolate bringing a faint smile to her lips. Do you have any family, Gemma? Alexander asked gently, taking a seat across from her. Gemma's smile faded, and she stared down at her mug. I, I don't know. She murmured her voice trembling. I don't remember. Alexander felt a pang of sorrow. It was clear that this child had been through something terrible, something that had left her scared and alone. But instead of pressing her for answers, Alexander simply nodded and offered a reassuring smile. That's all right, dear. You're safe here with me. Gemma looked up, her eyes searching Alexander's face as if looking for some sign of deceit. But all she saw was kindness and warmth, and for the first time in what felt like forever, she allowed herself to relax. Over the next few days, Alexander took care of Gemma as if she were her own. She prepared warm meals, drew baths, and made sure the little girl had everything she needed. At first, Gemma was quiet and withdrawn, her trust hard to earn, but slowly, she began to open up. Alexander enrolled her in the local elementary school, where the teachers were kind and patient, 
understanding that Gemma needed time to adjust. Alexander also spent hours with her, reading books, playing games, and simply talking. She never pressed Gemma for details about her past, understanding that the child would share when she was ready. One day, as they were sitting together on the porch, enjoying the crisp winter air, Gemma turned to Alexander with a hesitant expression. Why are you being so nice to me? Alexander looked at her, surprised by the question. Because you deserve to be treated with kindness, Gemma. Everyone does. But I'm not your family, Gemma said, her voice tinged with uncertainty. Alexander smiled gently. Family isn't just about blood, dear. It's about who loves you, who takes care of you. You're part of my family now. Gemma's eyes filled with tears, but she quickly blinked them away, not wanting to cry. Thank you, she whispered. Alexander reached over and took her hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. You're welcome, sweetheart. You don't have to thank me. As the days turned into weeks, Alexander noticed a change in Gemma. She started smiling more, her laughter a welcome sound that filled the once quiet house. She began to show interest in her schoolwork and even made a few friends at school. But there was still a sadness in her eyes, a shadow that Alexander couldn't ignore. One day, while Alexander was tidying up the attic, she stumbled upon an old chest that had been tucked away in a corner. It was covered in dust, clearly untouched for many years. Curious, she opened it and found a stack of letters tied together with a faded ribbon. The letters were addressed to Alexander's late husband, Robert, from a woman named Amelia, a name Alexander didn't recognize. As she read through the letters, Alexander's heart began to race. Amelia had written to Robert many years ago, explaining that she was unable to care for her young daughter, Gemma. She had asked Robert, a close family friend, to look after the child until she could get back on her feet. The letters ended abruptly, with no indication of what had happened to Amelia or her daughter. Alexander was stunned. Could this Gemma be the same child who had come into her life so unexpectedly? The idea seemed impossible, but the more she thought about it, the more it made sense. Perhaps Robert had agreed to take in the child, but had been unable to tell Alexander for some reason. Or maybe something had happened to Amelia before she could return for her daughter. Alexander knew she had to find out the truth. She showed the letters to Gemma, who recognized her mother's handwriting immediately. Tears filled Gemma's eyes as she read the words, her heart breaking all over again. She never came back for me, Gemma whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Alexander pulled her into a tight embrace, her own heart itching for the child. I'm so sorry, Gemma. I'm so sorry you had to go through this alone. Gemma clung to her, sobbing into her shoulder. For so long, she had felt abandoned and unloved. But now, in Alexander's arms, she felt something she hadn't felt in a long time. Hope. The discovery of the letters brought Alexander and Gemma even closer together. Alexander officially adopted Gemma, vying to give her the love and care she had been denied for so long. Gemma, in turn, began to flourish under Alexander's guidance, her confidence growing as she found stability and security in her new home. But there was still one mystery that needed to be solved. What had happened to Amelia? Alexander knew that they needed closure, and so she began to search for answers. She contacted old friends of Robert's Scullard Public Records and even hired a private investigator to help. After months of searching, they finally received a lead. Amelia had been living in a small town a few hundred miles away when she had suddenly disappeared. The investigator found records of her being admitted to a hospital, but after that, there was no trace of her. Undeterred, Alexander and Gemma decided to visit the town themselves. It was a long shot, but they needed to know what had happened to Amelia. When they arrived, they went to the hospital and spoke to an old nurse who had worked there at the time. The nurse, a kind woman with a gentle smile, remembered Amelia well. She was a lovely woman, the nurse said, her eyes distant as she recalled the past. But she was very sick. Cancer, I believe. She knew she didn't have much time left, and she was heartbroken about leaving her daughter. The way Gemma had repaid Alexander's kindness was more than just a trip or a gift. It was a life filled with love, care, and the promise that they would always be there for each other, no matter what. And that, Alexander knew, was the greatest gift of all. The way Gemma had repaid Alexander's kindness was more than just a trip or a gift. It was a life filled with love, care, and the promise that they would always be there for each other, no matter what and that Alexander knew was the greatest gift of all.